In this video, we're going to be working on solving the fertilizer problem pseudocode. And uh, I have that up on my screen right now. And of course, uh, those of you that have already been working on this, which you should have been, um, know that you have to click on this link here to actually get a description of the problem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll bring it up on screen. And I'll read it. And it says, John needs to determine how much liquid fertilizer he must buy for application on a client's lawn. The client's lawn is rectangular and measures 30 by 50 feet, uh, which totals 1,500 square feet. It says, the instructions on the bottle of fertilizer indicates that he needs to apply one gallon of fertilizer to each nine square yards of grass. All right, to solve this problem, John must first find how to convert square feet to yards, to square yards. Okay, so that should be pretty easy, right? How many square feet per square yard? Three, if you're saying three, that's very wrong. That's pretty weird, right? Because you guys are all pretty confident with that answer, right? Um, <laughs> let, me, let me bring up my, my handy little friend here, Microsoft Excel. Now, this is kind of a weird tool to use this as, as a demonstration, but it does have all these little blocks and stuff, right? And if I, like, make these the same size, so I make them kind of like they're squares, right? How many feet in a yard? Three feet in a yard, right? So if each one of these squares is 12 inches across, right? So if that's 12 inches by 12 inches, that's one square foot. So that would be two square feet, three square feet. And we agree that three feet makes a yard, right? But is that a square yard? No. Square yard would be nine square feet. Okay? And that's really kind of the, the, the calculation you guys need to figure out. So there's a little bit of like mathematic, and I'm not going to say mathematical trickery here, but it's a, it's a problem solving thing. And it's a real common mistake to not think that through. So, but that's okay. Because that's one of the reasons why we pseudocode is to find those kind of problems. Because if you code it into a program and the math is wrong, well, your program is going to be pretty wrong too. So, so that, that's really our answer there is that how many square yard, or so how many square feet in a square yard? It's nine square feet. Okay. All right, so to solve the problem, John, John must first find how to convert square feet to square yards. We figured that out, right? And the thing is, is there a formula? for? Can we express that as a formula? That's a thought. Keep that in your head. I'm not going to answer it yet, but the answer is yes. The question is, what's the formula? All right. Then divide the total square yards of the lawn by the coverage amount indicated on the bottle of fertilizer. And then you also have to make sure that you buy at least enough to cover the lawn. Extra fertilizer can be saved for the next job. So, for example, if I calculate that I need, let's say, 2.5 jugs of fertilizer, do I just buy two? No, you got to buy three, right? Unless, of course, you could buy like a half jug, but that's probably not the case. So that, that's really kind of the consideration there. He says, since John left his smartphone at home, right, so he's, everybody's lost without their phone, no calculator, he can't just look it up on the Internet, but fortunately he has a calculator in his, in his truck. To solve the problem, he will need to convert from square feet to square yards. We kind of already did that. And this is best achieved by fi finding the basic formula to do the calculation. And boy, hey, wait, I gave you the calculation right here. So it's all written out for you already. So we know that three feet equals one yard, and that a square yard is three feet by three feet, or nine square feet. This yields a simple equation. It says one square yard equals nine square feet. Right? And whenever we have stuff that's on both sides of an equal sign, you guys should learn you know, some basic math, and just remember some real basic things. Like, if I add a number to one side of an equation, I have to add it to the other side of the equation. And if I want to like cancel stuff out, you like cross multiply or divide by something. And that's part of what we're going to do here, because we're going to need to figure out how many total square yards we have 
based upon the, the 30 by 50 or the 1,500 square feet that we have. So there's a little bit of math that's going to happen there. All right, to simplify the formula, we can enter square feet and yield square yards, and we need to get rid of the 9 on the right side of the equation by dividing by 9 or multiplying by 0.1 repeating. Now, whenever I look at numbers and I look at something like 0.1 repeating, that doesn't look as clean to me as dividing by 9. So if you wrote out your pseudocode solution where the math is to multiply by 0.1 repeating, that's fine and it'll, it'll be right as long as that 0.1 keeps repeating forever, right? Um, but usually my approach would be that I would divide by 9 instead because that is expressed in a cleaner fashion. But either one will yield the right answer. So that, please keep that in mind. All right, so here is the solution to this. Boy, this isn't much of a homework problem, is it? It doesn't, it's not always this easy, folks. I'm helping you out on the first one. All right, so our pseudocode, and basically what you guys should be doing here, and, and I'm, I'm doing this mostly to, to help guide you on the process of doing it. I'm going to create a new Word document. I'll max it out on the screen here, zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to say fertilizer problem solving. And if you want to use my conventions, I always put the unit number in front of the assignment name just so I know what unit it's in. It just helps me keep track. And then what I'm going to do is I'll start a new line here, but I will probably bold this and make it a little larger. All right. So the first thing that it says in the solution Heck, can I just copy this? You shouldn't do that, but yeah, you can copy it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And, you know, the better practice here, folks, really is that you try to reason through this yourself. But sometimes looking at an, at an example really kind of helps to, to clarify a lot of different things. Uh, not the least of which is just the, the problem-solving process of it all. So I know there's a little bit left here on the same or on the next page, so I'm going to grab that too, if the PDF lets me. There we go. Just do a little bit of cleanup here. All right, so let's just take a look at, at the pseudocode now. Now, if you remember back to the slides from the first chapter, one of the first things you should figure out in terms of pseudocoding is what is you what are you trying to figure out ultimately how many jugs he needs to buy right because you don't want to fall short you also don't want to spend too much money and have too too many laying around um, but it'll all be relevant relevant to the size of the lawn that we're working with so they told us already that the size of the lawn is 50 feet by 30 feet it's a nice big yard all right but what if you walk into a situation where the yard's a different size or shape, right? Let's just assume a square or rectangular shaped yard. So the thing that you'll ask the user always is, how wide is the yard? How long is the, is the yard? All right, so we will prompt the user and ask them, get the lawn length and get the lawn width. And since we know that area is calculated by lawn length times lawn width, we can actually do that math here. And notice I'm going to say the lawn area is equal to 50 times 30, or which is the equivalent to 1,500 square feet. Next, by reading the instructions on the jug, we know that it's one jug per nine square feet. Was that what it was? No. It, well, actually, it says, what did it say? Yeah. The bottle of fertilizer indicates it needs to buy, apply one gallon of fertilizer for each nine square yards. <laughs> well, that's the trick, right? It's a one gallon jug. You know, it's, I get it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really say that, does it? The instruction in the bottle of fertilizer indicates it needs to buy one gallon. All right, so we will assume that each jug 
has one gallon. So maybe that maybe that's something I could add to the instructions to make it clear. Okay. So one gallon per nine square yards. Well, if nine square yards or one square yard is nine square feet, then nine square yards is nine times nine, right? So it's going to be 81, 81 square yards. Am I, am I leading you astray with my logic yet? If anything, if you're listening to what I'm saying right now, your brain should either be flagging, what the hell is he talking about? He's totally wrong. Or, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. No wonder my stuff turned out wrong. So the devil is in the details. So it's kind of like, this is really kind of, you know, the crux member of IT I told you guys last week is problem solving, right? You can't really solve a problem unless you clearly understand it. So this is really kind of my point here. And I don't mean to belabor it because we do kind of have the answer already. All right, but let's just move on to the next step and see if it makes more sense this way. It says divide the lawn area by nine to determine the number of square yards because we know there's nine square feet inside one square yard, right? We proved that on that spreadsheet. So that makes sense. So if I divide the lawn area, or 1,500 by 9, that will tell me how many square yards I have. And that tells me I have 166.6 square yards. All right. Then we take the instructions that are on the gallon jug of fertilizer that says divide those square yards by 9. Well, it doesn't say that on the jug, but it, it tells us. So why are we dividing by 9 then? That's right. So that's how many there, how many there are per that quantity. So then that math is then 166.6 divided by 9, which turns out to be 18.5. So we will buy 19 gallons of fertilizer. Now, the interesting thing with this is we're given numbers, and here's a solution, and it makes sense because it's all laid out for you. Now, when you come up with an algorithm like this, which is really the step-by-step -step way to solve it, the test for it is to apply it to a different size lawn and see what numbers you come up with, right? So, and then see if that makes sense. So, for example, if I maybe change these numbers to, let's say I doubled these numbers and it was 100 times uh, 60. Let's do that math. So what would that be? Let me bring up my calculator here. Oops. So if I had 100 times 60, twice the dimension on each size, I mean, the logic, you're saying if you're going to double each one of those numbers, it should be twice the amount, right? Is that going to be the case? No, because they're being multiplied against each other. So really, we're looking at 6,000 square feet, which is how much bigger? It's four times bigger. Right? All right, it, it's okay to have a blank stare. That's fine. <laughs> but let's just take these numbers. So wherever I had the 1,500 now, Instead of uh, dividing here uh, 1,500 by 9, I'm going to divide 6,000 by 9. So my square yards is, ooh, that's kind of scary. All right, it's a good thing we're not making a horror movie. 666 square yards. And then there are the number of gallons needed by dividing by 9. And remember, 9 square feet, 9 square yards. So we'll divide this once again by 9, and we'll come up with 74 gallons for a lawn that is 100 by 60. And that does make sense. It might not have made sense initially because I'm like, well, if it's 100 feet, right, I'm multiplying by 2 in that one character inside the equation. But I'm also doing that on the other side, so really it is... I'm, I'm adding to it 2 times 2, which is really times 4. So you see why it works out that way. All right. So that is the pseudocode part of it. 
Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an example here of a solution that one of my other students wrote up. And this was his, okay, that's, that didn't paste very cleanly. Let's just make a new Word document instead. All right, so this is one student's uh, solution. You can see the guy's name right there. Um, and I'll make it bigger, don't worry. So this was his pseudocode. And I accepted this as good. Now notice, his pseudocode is much simpler than mine because I put in explanations and I was substituting numbers, right? But really, this is kind of the pseudocode in a nutshell. It's get the length in feet. You're going to get that from your user or from the guy, the lawn technician. So we'll type in the length, we'll type in the width, and then it will do some computations, and the computations will be length times width. And notice how this is not set up with specific numbers. This is the pseudocode. This allows me to plug in any numbers I want and get the right answer. All right? Then uh, we take it to the next equation. Square feet divide by 9 gives us the square yards. Square yards divided by 9 gives us the number of gallons. And then we would display the number of gallons needed. Now, of course, the technician that was looking at the output, he would look at the output and go 18.5 and say, all right, well, that means I need 19. And if you want, you could actually write another step into the pseudocode, which is round up to the next number if you wanted. That could be a step, and I think that would be fine. I also get people that get smart and go, well, if I divide by 9 twice, that's the same as dividing by 81, right? It actually is. If you do the math, it is. So if you came up with an equation that said um, number of gallons equals square yards divided by 9, or actually it would be square feet divided by 81, that would give you the same answer. And then I guess some people get clever and they put all of it into one long equation. You can do that too. I think that when you start doing pseudocoding, that's a little problematic, though. My preference, and this is true in, I think, all levels of programming, that a problem is easier to solve if you can break it down into little pieces. And then once you have those little pieces, then you can start to see the shortcuts. Because really, all of these things tie together. I could write it as one equation. But I would probably break it down into the pieces first before I wrote that long equation. Make sense? All right. So this would be pseudocode for the fertilizer problem that I would find acceptable. Notice it's only six lines of text. You're getting two inputs. You're displaying output at the bottom. And in the middle, you're doing a little bit of processing, which is a series of three mathematical computations. Those can be simplified or expressed separately. That's perfectly fine. All right. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'll pull over his flow chart. Actually, you know what? I'll build the flow chart just to, to show you how I would do it. Fair enough? And the way that I would do it is I would probably just do it right on the same document, right? Why have it a separate document? Doesn't make sense. I'll make this a little smaller. And then I'll come down here. And then I'm going to use the tools that are just built right in, into Word. And I'm just going to start uh, drawing. So I'm going to the Insert menu. And then I'm going to go to Shapes. Now, for those of you that are here in the classroom, if you're following along with me and trying to mimic what I'm doing, and I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down or stop or pause or wait a second. It's okay. All right. So there's a couple of different types of shapes that we're going to use. There was one shape, and the one shape looked like this, which is one where we're going to use to just type start. Now, the program that we're writing right now is a, a real base level program, and it's all sequential. So it's step by step by step by step. We don't have any of those loops going on. We don't have any decisions to make. There's no branching or anything that happens. It's just one thing after the other. So what I'm going to opt to do is I'm going to create the shapes first, and then I'm going to draw the arrows in. And, and you might choose to do it a different way. That, that's absolutely fine. Beauty is not essential, <laughs> but readability is. All right. Give me just a moment. So K 
keeping my eye firmly on the pseudocode now, I'm going to go to the first step, which is to get a form of input. And if you remember from the lecture, the shape for an input Oh, and let's talk about that. You see this little layout option box that just popped up? Um, one little helpful thing is when you're doing this, it will have these different modes. And the one that I usually like to, to choose is the one that says in front of text because that allows you to move it around on the page without changing where the text sits. And if you choose one of these other options, like if I were to move this box up on the page, then all the words would move, and that, that can be kind of messy. So that's just a, a helpful tip if you get that screen. With any of these objects, though, you can always right-click them and then do a format object if you're in the right mode. And actually, the box just pops up, so it looks like that's how they're doing it in 2016 now. All right, I'm going to go back to the insert menu, grab another shape, and this time I'm looking for an input shape, which is the parallelogram, and that looks kind of like this. You want to change the colors, you can do that too. And I'm just going to type almost what I, exactly what I have up in the pseudocode, so I'm just going to say get length in feet. Well, I'm going to have to do this again, right? So notice that I pressed escape to get out of the text mode of this, and then the little handles on the, on the shape are still there. And when it's in this mode, I can actually do a Control-C to copy, or right-click copy, and then a Control-V to paste. And then I don't have to recreate the shape. I can actually just uh, change the text. And you just double-click inside there, and it'll allow you to do that. So I'm going to get the width in feet this time. I probably should start making this look a little nicer. Uh, next thing we need to do is compute square feet, just like that. That should be in a rectangular shape. And there's a rectangle right there. Now, I'm not going to... Um, put the word compute in here, I'm just very simply going to paste the equation. And once again, I'm going to copy paste because I have three equations, right? So I'll just paste twice. And then I'll just change the text inside. So I'll come up here, grab the next equation, Grab the next equation. I'm going to copy some extra junk there. Well, that's pretty ugly, isn't it? You guys have to worry about how nice it looks. I don't. <laughs> right, because you, you can spend days like making this stuff look pretty if you want. Then finally, the last step of the pseudocode was to do an output, so I need that parallelogram shape again. And I could have copied the one from above, I suppose. And I'm just going to say output. Num of, where's my output? Output num of gallons. And then finally, I'll copy that start shape and paste it back down at the bottom as an end shape. And then really the last thing I have left to do, folks, is to draw some arrows in and make it look better. So I'm, I'll go ahead and do the insert. I'm going to create one arrow, and then after I create that one, 
I'm just going to copy and paste. And then just use my mouse and drag and drop them into place. All right. Not perfect. Not particularly pretty. I would hope that you'd go through and, and you know, try to make the fonts consistent and the backgrounds consistent. Uh, what my student did that I'm using as kind of a reference here, this is what his looked like. He ended up coloring his, but even his wasn't all that perfect. So I'm not looking for visual beauty here. I'm looking for your problem solving capabilities and the fact that you're getting used to using the tools. Once again, here's, uh, here's my version. It's the whole thing up on the screen. Those of you in class, remember I am recording this. So you can go back and play it back. Did any of you watch the uh, videos at all? I'm just curious. The, the on, on, I know the online people do. No? Okay, that's fine. You won't hurt my feelings. I know the online people watch them. So This, uh, folks, is the solution for the fertilizer problem. Um, just to kind of step through the process of submitting the homework, what I would do uh, in your circumstances, I would find a spot where you would store your homework, find some logically named folder, name your file in a meaningful way. So I'm, I'm calling mine fertilizer pseudocode and flowchart. Make sure it's saved as a Word document. And then when you're all done with it, then you would jump over to Blackboard and find that assignment link, wherever that happens to be. And you just click on it. Attach your file. And then maybe you want to say, this was fun, or something encouraging or uplifting, or if you had a problem figuring it out, or you had some issues, or whatever information you want to convey, feel free. And then just click Submit. Now, mine's going to throw an error because I can't turn in my own homework. Uh, but that's the process from start to finish for doing a pseudocode solution. Now, in the next video that uh, we're going to create, um, that one's going to involve actually taking this pseudocode and flowchart and turning it into an actual working computer program. Now, this uh, assignment for the visual basic part of the fertilizer problem, that is part of unit one, but how to use Visual Studio is actually in unit two. So before I actually create that video, we're going to do a little bit of like a, a preface on Visual Studio. So I'm going to show you what Visual Studio looks like, how to use the tool, the interface, and then once we get some of the basics in place, then we'll build this application. It's a pretty quick, easy little build, and you'll learn a lot in the process. I'll guide you through every step of it, um, and then when we get to Unit 2, I'm going to kind of cut the strings a little bit more and let you kind of struggle through it a little bit on your own, and then I, I will still show you the solutions, but I, I want to see your problem-solving process at that point rather than giving you all the answers. Um, you know, the last closing thing that I'm going to throw in is just remember whenever you're working on any sort of a, a, a programming problem and you're trying to solve it, um, and it becomes more complex than this one, and most of them will be. They'll, they'll have a little bit more going on. Remember, there's no necessary right and wrong if you come up with a way that actually works. There's some ways that are more efficient than others, and everybody's got their own approach. But usually the best solutions are the ones that are most efficient and, and often involve the least amount of code, believe it or not, because you can get to that answer without writing a lot of stuff that's extraneous. All right, folks, that wraps up this video, and uh, we'll pick up in the next one.